Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Marianne Halpern of Three Rivers Manufacturing. Mary Ann and her husband Les have been running Halpern Titanium since 1997, supplying parts for custom knife makers. But in the past handful of years, they've become known farther and wider for TRM and the amazing knives they produce right up there in Massachusetts. Mary Ann is a veteran of the show and of the town hall, but I had the pleasure of meeting her and Les in person at Blade Show 2021 earlier this summer. And I'm excited to find out what's new at TRM and what they have cooking up next for us greedy knife nerds. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. And while you're there, check out my knife close-up videos, Thursday Night Knives, our live stream, and other great interviews with makers and personalities that make the knife world happen. Now, if you think what we do here is valuable and you want to help support the show while enjoying exclusive opportunities and content, you can do so by going to Patreon. Quickest way to get there is to head over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. Marianne, welcome back to the show. It's great to see you. Good to see you, Bob. Uh, so as I mentioned up front, I finally got a chance to meet you in person, and I met Les, yeah. too. And uh, it was great to see you up there at Blade. How was that show for you? It, it was a great show. I was, I, I was thinking it was going to be much stranger, and everyone was going to be really cautious, and it just felt like being normal again. It was great. Met a lot of the people from our Facebook group. Um, it was just good. I never hardly left the booth in three days. I had a lot of talking. <laughs> a lot of talk. Uh, I had actually, when I was at your booth, it was one of the times uh, that I met some of the people that I've spoken to just through the comment section here, and they happened to be there. So it was, it was, yeah, uh, we, you know. We have two guys that work for Knives, Chad oh. Watson. <laughs> he, I, I met Chad maybe seven or eight years ago when he was buying some titanium for a project as a knife maker. And somehow we just kind of got to know each other just through Instagram and he lives in Georgia, and I asked him to work for Knives, and he gladly did two years, three years ago, and then, uh, yeah, two years ago, and then this past year, too. And then another one of our guys from the group, Brian, he also worked for Knives. And uh, Dylan Huff, he, Dylan Duff, he's on the outskirts of working for Knives. He was his first time late show, but it's kind of fun having some guys give us a little bit of a break, and they love it, and uh, just give them a couple knives here and there. Yeah, it's good to have groupies. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and please forgive me if you're listening and, and uh, you guys are listening. You know, groupie, I use that term yeah. affectionately. Oh, oh, I know, I know. I never thought I would be have a groupie or a <laughs> fan fanboy or whatever, but it's kind of fun. So when I was at your um, booth, you did me a real solid and I appreciate it. You gave me these beautiful scales, uh, the uh, burlap micarta with the wing milling uh, yeah. milling pattern and so i just thought i'd show you what yeah. what yeah. the knife looks like with that on there <laughs> and have you used that knife oh yeah yeah i use this knife a lot yeah. uh this is so uh people who know the show know i like uh i like real kind of scary tactical knives uh but i also have to carry real knives for actual use and uh <laughs> and this this is one one of those knives that i carry a lot and actually um since i've gotten these burlap scales I've, I'm finding I carry it even more. I've always had a real thing yeah. for micarta and burlap is my favorite. And um, so today, this this only got used for food today, but this is That's a great food knife. Pretty much all I use, boxes and food, yeah. apples, carrots, and and tape. Yeah, and and, and uh, so on the apples, it was two apples <laughs> today. On the apples, it does great. It's like a chef's knife in your pocket. Yeah, you can cut it like so you can see through the apple. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we, I mentioned earlier that at your table uh, or your booth, I got a chance to meet Les. Tell me a little bit about the background of Halpern Titanium and oh. and and how, and how it evolved. I mean, before we started rolling, you were you were singing Les's praises as a as like a top flight milling man. So tell me how TRM came about. Wow, you got a couple hours here. Got a, <laughs> got a, 
I'll give you the short version. Halpern Titanium started in 1997. Les worked at Munson Developmental Center where he was a designer for adaptive equipment, wheelchairs and electronic things like that. And he was told um, they were closing down and he was losing his job. So he thought he likes knives. We so thought he'd start a hobby kind of um, selling custom knife makers, screws, pieces of G10, pieces of titanium. And he did that. He did not lose his job, but he kept his job. He did it for part time for a couple of years. And then off we went into carbon fiber dust throughout our house when he was cutting up some coupons. So I do have a picture of him in a Facebook group with him outside and with a table saw with dust all over him because we didn't want dust in the kitchen anymore. So he got kicked outside while he was cutting up coupons um, for us for one of the manufacturers. And I said, it's time to leave. So we got a, we rented a place a few miles away, 3000 square feet, no machines, really nearly not a business. Um, and then we kind of got one thing after another, got to the custom knife makers. We sold, like let's say we sold Ken Onion some G10 and then he got hooked up with Kershaw and they said, well, where'd you get this Ken? Next thing we're shipping G10 to Kershaw, G10 around the world. So we became distributors of, of material. And then someone else would say, well, can you make these? Well, sure. And then we found the CNC machinist to make things for us. And the first year we did that, we, we built out $100,000 and I paid the person that made it 90000 so that didn't, that wasn't really good. So we, we said we should buy one of those machines. What, what is a CNC anyway? So we bought one and then we got more business and then we bought two and then we both retired from our jobs and then we got three and five and now we have about 30 different machines. We have uh, two sets of burger grinders. We just have a brand new set that's going to get hooked up hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We have a surface grinder. We have two water jets. I don't know, 20, 20 mils on and on, about 30 altogether. Hmm. So we just we just evolved. It's, it's much more detail along the way, but we just evolved. Every time I was in my comfort zone, but I thought it would be great if Les sold $100,000 worth of supplies to custom knife makers, and that would be a nice hobby, and we'd be done. Well, every time I would kind of feel comfortable, we would go to the next step. So we'd buy a machine. Well, that's good. I like that. Oh, we got to buy another one. Oh, we got to knock a wall down and move down the hallway. Oh, we got to. So we now have about 25,000 square feet from our first 3,000, all in the same building. Um, we just kind of, every time a business went out of business, we just tore, took the walls down and moved some machines in. So it's just been an evolution through the years. And as the industry grow, growth, we first started, all I would order would be black G10. That's all black was it. You have black G10. And that's all. I'd always make sure I had piles and piles of black G10 for milling. And we did carbon fiber right from the beginning. And then a couple of colors of G10 would start. And now it's just evolved. And there must be 25 different colors of G10. And my Carta world has exploded. And now we're doing G Carta, um, that carbon probably pretty soon. Um, okay. So we just really evolved with the industry. The more we did, we did flat G10. Okay, and what can you do? Can you do titanium? So you, first you say yes. And then you figure out how that's kind of our business model. You always say yes. And then you say how we figure it out. We had a company that wanted us to do 8,000 parts a month. Now, first it was going to be 8,000 a year. And then it went to uh, 30,000 a month. And then it went to, we did the first year, a uh, quarter of a million parts. And uh, they just, we just said, sure, we can do that. And we bought machines just to do that job. And we did the same job for 12 years. So we just have to, be out of your comfort zone and, and just keep saying yes. And we just kept saying yes. And we, you know, whatever people want. Yes. Can you do flat titanium? Of course. Oh, how about this 3d? Yeah, of course we can do that. And Les has spent, Oh my God. When we first started, we just did inserts, just flat little inserts for G10 for another company. And that's about the easiest programming you could ever do. And right in the middle of that, our programmer decided he didn't want to work for us anymore. And next thing Les started his, the process of becoming an expert. I don't know if you're f familiar at all with Malcolm Gladwell, but he believes it takes oh, yeah. like 10,000 hours to be an expert. Yeah. Well, Les is like, I don't know how many tens of thousands of hours and he just loves it. He, you know, would be home at night and he'll be watching YouTube master cam on YouTube or something like that. He just, he goes to work on the weekends, which is, is the shop. That's where he goes to play. So it's just in his, in his blood and he never stops and he just never stops getting better. 
So, so it was uh, it was all G10 handle scales to major companies at first. Yes, G10, okay. Sun Micarta, and Carbon Fiber. Those were our first few jobs. I remember we got an order from a big company for six thousand pieces of carbon fiber, small little handle, and that was like wow, that was unbelievable. So that's so, how we started. So chances are, like, if you were collecting knives in the early 2000s and uh, the, you know, uh, the, the 2010s, and you had uh, a major manufacturer from America, you probably had TRM scales on your, on your handles. On, H on Halbert, your, uh, but not, not just the United States, though, around okay. the world. Oh, world. it wasn't TRM at the time either. Halpern, Hal yeah. Halpern. Halpern. Okay. And, it's, and that still exists. Halpern's still going and stronger than ever. So it's still going. I got two good businesses that are Jeez. both growing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's yeah, Halpern's still going, but it's private, so that's what it is. And it's staying, but we keep we just bought two more machines. Just came in uh, Wednesday. Yesterday. Uh, what's today? Yesterday. Two more machines for the for the private label uh, machining. So that yeah. has not stopped. You know, some you know, that has not stopped. And people that come when we come for little tours, they have the shortened tour because there's a whole section that we don't let anybody see. But if they do see something they shouldn't see, they have to swear that they'll never tell anybody because we'll have to kill them. So <laughs> they, they, they take that very seriously because we, we take it very seriously. People say, I didn't know you were here. I didn't know you did that. And our answer is, yeah, that's right. That That's a good thing. Yeah, we don't have to have a, you know NDA necessarily. We just take it seriously that we're it's private. Certain certain companies, they know, you know, people say, yeah, it's OK. We've done some work for them. But. Um, we don't go run around talking about what we do for other people, but it's all that has, has been all those years of learning. Three rivers just is an overnight success that started 25 years ago. All, all that learning, you don't, doesn't just, you don't, you're not really starting fresh in every way. You're starting fresh and making your own knives and all the marketing. It's a whole different end of the business, but all that learning um, didn't just happen in the last couple of years. Okay, wait. So before we actually get to TRM, you're talking about uh, private label OEM, you know, manufacturing for other companies, other outfits. Um, so would you say that you really earned your bones there doing the private label stuff, learned how to build knives and all? all yeah, learned absolutely. the pitfalls and stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then and then you That's took all that. We did. We about we're about ninety eight percent knives still. We do some things for uh, flashlights. Um, <laughs> we make we do water jet cutting. We do a few things that aren't related to knives, but we're one of the few. We're not. I don't consider it a regular machine shop. We do knives. We have that niche as knives. So having our name of Halpern Titanium has been good because it's not like Halpern Knife Company. You know, it's a small town. And today we just had two guys came to visit. They they are uh, um, EMTs and they just realized that we were there and it's like, that's good. That's good that you just realized that because you know, it's knives and some people freak out about it. When I was a teacher and I, I retired from teaching and people say, well, what are you doing? Well, we're making knives and you get that two step back and you start talking about, what do you think of those Red Sox? You just know, you can't turn a non knife <laughs> person into thinking that it makes sense. You can't say, well, how do you cut your meat? How do you, what have you needed to open a box that you can't, turn someone around if their first reaction is to you know cringe when you say knife yeah yeah but when yeah. you're um when you're sort of in the same um environment over and over over the past 12 years at my current job yeah. i have turned a number of people into mm -hmm. knife people just by giving them to them oh, right, right. Knife, you know absolutely and, and then i start seeing the pocket clips you know a couple months later i start seeing yeah, the pocket yeah. clips actually in the pocket and yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. We see that too. We, like we'll have someone that visits and they're not the typical guy that would spend a lot of money on a knife, but they like it. And then they'll, they'll tell their friend or they'll give it to their brother and their brother won't give it back. So one by one, um, people do that. But in the teaching world, right. I don't want to speak for all teachers, but they're up when, when I went to a breakfast shortly after retiring and one of the teachers says, how you doing? And I was actually started to answer, you know, like, how I was doing, <laughs> he didn't really care. So I just find it, it's just a different world. So we, we left those years behind. Well, thank God you did because <laughs> you know, not only is it probably better for your own sanity, but I mean, you're making these knives yeah. that people are just crazy about. Um, how did you decide on what the first knives were going to be and what the, you know, after having made knives for so many different designers and, and uh, 
and uh, knife companies out there. How did you settle on, how did you hone down uh, your own vision for your own company? Right. Well, the first one was the Nomad, which I don't know if you even know, that goes back about seven years because Les loves slip joints. So we made the Nomad and we were working with Monkey Edge on that one. And he bought a, a, a hunk of those. Uh, but the problem is we were making a lot of knives for other people at that point. So when you're doing something for somebody else, they always won. Right now, we're not making any complete knives for anybody but Three Rivers. We're still making parts, but we're not making any complete knives. So, so that project was one. And then the next thing, thing I think was Bob Terzola. Since when we started in the knife industry selling to custom knife makers, we knew all the custom knife makers. They're all, you know, they bought from us. We saw them at shows. So we, our first thought was to go back to some of the custom guys and say, all right, let's do something together. So we did the Bob Terzola. That's when we weren't having a lot of fun making names. So it was called the BT Bob Terzola and a thousand. That sounds good. It was the next one was going to be, you know, 2000. We didn't know before we started having fun making up names. So we made that one. And it was, at that point, it was just a couple hundred and done. That was our philosophy at that point. We did one with RJ Martin, a couple hundred and you're done. Mm. Um, but at the same time, we were doing other things and it kept, our stuff kept getting pushed behind. And then I think Les came with his Thunderbird. And maybe that was four years ago. And that one's beautiful. Another be beautiful knife, but it's just a it has a little bit too small a niche. It wasn't something that was going to go, wow, everyone's going to have one of those. Why? Um, what, was, what was the design of the Thunderbird? That was a little more tactical? No, not at all. It looks like okay. a bird, Thunderbird, beautiful machining. I'll have to, no, I don't think there's even a picture on the website anymore. It, it's, we'll send you a picture, Bob. I, I'm not okay. good at describing all the intricacies. Gotcha. But, it, but it was, it was <laughs> more beautiful. sculpted. It was yeah, more sculpted. sculpted and... like Art Deco kind of thing. And it's sort of like, I wouldn't carry it. You know, it's too much. It wouldn't be something that, you know, maybe it'll poke you a little bit more than something else would. It just doesn't, to me, it's not like your everyday pocket knife, but it's beautiful. So it had a smaller market as well. Um, I'm just trying to think where we got. Okay, then Les still likes slip joints. So, and he also said, I'm going to just make a knife. You know, what, when you think of someone says, draw a knife, what would it look like? It's just kind of like what our atom and neutron is. So we made a Viator, which was a slip joint. And again, it had its market, but it's not something everybody wants a slip joint. So we went from the Viator to the Neutron, which is the exact same knife, but it's a liner lock. And it's just a knife. It's nice. It's light, titanium, good steel, U.S., 100% U.S. Every single component is U.S. And that's when it all went nuts. Nick Shabazz got one, and he made it his knife of the year, 2018. And our grinders had been down at that point for about six weeks. We had no Neutrons ready to get shipped. We had nothing. So Nick said, you better make a... You better make, take advantage of this. You better make a waiting list or something. So I made a waiting list, and in, oh, about 10 days, we had 300. And I was, like, so excited. Wow. 10 days to get 300. Wow, wow, wow. So we got them out, and that kept growing and growing and growing. And and Nick had said, why don't you make the whole damn Atom, which we already were doing. Les was already making a larger version. He was making the Atom. So that was not Nick's idea. That was just, I think he kind of we went with the name because I'll make the whole damn Adam. <laughs> so that came up. What, what Les also did on that one is we made pocketed liners, which gives you the material. The original material is about 140,000 thick. So it gives you an opportunity to get all kinds of material where the neutrons were just about 60,000 thick. And there's just not that much material you can buy at that thickness. So that whole scale phenomenon just absolutely went crazy once we started doing that. Um, and it, it's just getting more and more. So after doing the Adam. Wait, wait, hang on. Bef the, I'm, I'm sorry. Before, ahead, sorry. You, before you move on, talk about the scale phenomenon, because that is a, <laughs> that, that is a huge concept in these knives. Uh, what, tell us how these are built and, and their customizability. Well, it's built that you can just take the scale off without removing the pivot. You don't have to take it apart at all. So all you're doing is taking out the uh, scale screws and the clip. And it just pops it right over the pivot and you put on a new one. We have customers that have, I don't know, one customer has I don't know, maybe one customer has 16 atoms all with different scales. But some customers <laughs> might have 16 scales in one atom. Um, but it is easy to take them off. And it's a little tricky for us because when you're taking a scale, every single one has to be so perfect that it's going to fit on the other guy's scale. If you had a scale that had a problem and you're assembling the knife, you could fix it. 
right at, the, at that time, if the pocket was a little bit off, something was wrong. But now we're sending out thousands and thousands yeah. of scales, separate scales to go onto somebody's knife. You know, my Carta acts different from G10. Uh, it's, it could be a little warped or something. Uh, so somebody's getting this and they put it on and say, like, wow, how come it's, it's not laying flat or this or that? So it's quite a challenge to make sure that somebody can get it and put it on that easily. So we, since that was such a good phenomenon, we kept it going with the, and made the neutron. It's kind of its baby brother now. The neutron came, the neutron two has the same uh, pocketed liners. So that material is 100, 125,000 thick. That also gave us the same idea of being able to get lots of different materials. And it just keeps growing. I don't know how many, maybe 50 different scale options, maybe more. I think we've had 60 at one point for the atom, just the atom. So it gets a little bit crazy as far as you, keep, have a, having an inventory. I mean, Les always says, well, you don't really want to have an inventory. I'm saying how we need more room for our inventory. And he says, well, that doesn't sound such like such a good idea to make more room for an inventory. Right. The idea is that you don't have a big inventory. So we definitely try to gauge what people are going to like so we don't you know, overdo it with something they don't like or really underdo it with something that people wish they had. So it's a, it's a, a bit of a balance. And also trying to have the scales you need when you're trying to put knives together, not just worrying about scales that are, oh, there. I don't know, is the Thunderbird not even on there? Oh, boy. Take so you, <laughs> you, you, just did a, uh, you just did a drop of G. Carta um, uh, yes. atom scales. I'm, gonna, yes. I'm going to get the green. Um, yes. And I know I have to jump on it because they're going to be yeah, gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's still some green. Uh, I, I, God, they're beautiful. I love uh, GL Hansen and Son. Yeah, I love yeah. their G Carta. Yeah. Um, so uh, the other night when we were talking, you mentioned how you're doing something new with your scales, uh, uh, contouring. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. Let's see. I have my. It's kind of hard to show it. You can probably look at the pictures as well. It's very hard to. I don't know. Let me get there. I I never leave home without my neutron. Um, uh, it's not hard if you can see it. It's very subtle. See, I always go the wrong way. I have no sense of which way to go. Uh, it's very subtle, but it's contoured horizontally, and it's contoured going across the short way. And it's very, very subtle. If you look at it, the back end is – here we go. Oh, I'm so bad at that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give that up. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of one of these things that's very hard to picture. It is on. You can see them on the website, but uh, it's just that it's a, it took a long time to get that contoured. So sometimes things that are – so it looks like, oh, that was so simple, but it's not simple to get that. So you don't have one side that's too sharp on the end or whatever you might have to do. Yeah. And with the contour, we still have to come down to be able to use the same pivot. So it has to have a spot there to pivot where the screws are. Because if you're going to have different different uh, scales swap, they have to fit the flat ones. They have to fit the 3D ones. They have to fit the wing ones. They have to fit everything. So there's a lot to the programming um, to make it use the same hardware that people already have. So there's a lot of little tricks to it. Do you think so, that this uh, scale concept is uh, has been a driving force in the success of these knives? I don't think it's been a driving force. I think it's just been like an extra, a really extra, I won't say surprise, but to the degree it is, yes, it's a little bit beyond what I could have thought. I think it's just all, par all part of it. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly you wouldn't buy 16 atoms that had the same scale on it, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's a phenomenon, but it, it's certainly the knives themselves. Uh, it, like Nick made it the knife of the year, but we have to, people say, oh, he got the best QC ever. But the, every customer feels like they need and deserve, and we give them the same QC. So it, it's easy if everything, uh, people tell you how great they are, but you gotta, you got to back it up. And I think that's, what, that's the hard part for us. But, yeah, we love the scales. Um, did I charge you for those? I'd give you those, Bob. No, you gave me these. Oh, okay. Thank you, you didn't get that. And I'm not get giving the bill them back. You didn't get the invoice. Oh, <laughs> oh I didn't get the bill yet. That's what no, it is. No, that's right. Um, we have fun with that. Hillary has contests on uh, one of our great workers, has all kinds of contests on um, on our in our Facebook group. And, you know, you might get a free scale. You might win a chance to buy a scale, whatever. My knives, all kinds of things. So that's a very active group. We're over 3,700 members now. And we're still trying to keep it that nice and warm and fuzzy group. And, and they're really awesome guys. They they sell their knives for no markup. There's guys that, oh, I have an extra. They give it away. They make up their own contests. Uh, just an amazing group. So I think um, I think the, the, the scale concept is really valuable to, you know, knife collectors who, you know, these are not the easiest knives to get your hands on in the first place. So if you have a way to... 
make it seem like you have a whole collection of them uh, just by swapping yeah. out the scales. I, I think that's yeah. a, I think that's a brilliant, um, I think that's a brilliant way to sort of um, handle demand yeah. while you're making more. Yeah. But but what about the knife itself? Do you think is uh, and I'm right now I'm talking about the one I have, which is, a, yeah. which is the atom. But all of your knives, what do you think separates them from the from the herd? Well, I think I mean what our brand at this point is that they're light, they're well made. There's they're good materials, titanium, good steels. Um, and they're just a knife. They're not intimidating. They're a knife. You can flick it out. And people bring them in their office or they get the nerd for their office. And they just work. They're nice. They're sharp. They're light. You don't even know you're carrying it. Um, and we definitely are proud of, of 100% USA. I'm not sure. I'm sure that matters to some people, but it really matters to us. And that includes every single item in here. Nothing is made anywhere but in the United States. Every screw, every pivot, thumb stud, clip, um, Everything is sourced in the United States, and um, that's important for us too. That we're manufacturing this country, and that's the way it's going to be. Uh, you mentioned um, that Les uh, sort of indicated he just wanted to design a knife. You know, he he yeah. he he got some of his artistic uh, jollies out, if you will, yeah. with the with the Thunderbird, and then he just wanted to design a knife. And I I feel like. Um, the fact that that this is kind of has classic clean lines, right? And uh, there's not there's not too much flash to it, really. Right. Uh, I, it seems like so much energy was put into making it thin, making it easy yep. to carry, and making right. the the blade itself thin with a yeah. very thin grind, thin behind the edge. People love these knives, I think, right. because they right. cut, cut so well. They cut. They cut. And I've been cut many many times. It's it's funny because yeah. it, it almost seems like with some designs the cutting part is an afterthought. Right. Um, I think that's changing a lot just due to to popular um, demand and such. But I think your knives really um, were were part and parcel to to starting that. <laughs> it I sounds think so ridiculous. I think, but... No, I think so too. That whole, that ninety thousands, which is very thin. It's a trick yeah. to grind it like that so the blades don't bend and keeping it all even. It's it's a challenge to do that, but I do think we kind of set set some people to say maybe I shouldn't make such big bulky knives that I have to use to pry things. So most of the time, all you're needing is to cut a box or a piece of tape or something. So um, yeah, they're practical, and I I just carry the neutron. I don't need three and a half inches, but a lot of people the neutron's too small for them. So kind of cover those two bases. So, so at at your table at Blade. Um, I, I couldn't help but notice the gorgeous new knife or new-ish uh, knife on the turntable. Tell us uh, yeah. about the shadow and how that design was born. It, it seems different, but the same, you know, obviously coming from the same place, but a well, kind of a new concept, different concept. Right. The turntable had the titanium shadow, I believe, right? Yes, it or did. Anyway, we, have, we have both of them. Um, I have in my hand here, I have three things here that are very hard to get right next to me here. I figure that's part of, part of your show, right? That's, yes, it is. Yeah, we can stir everybody up here. Um, the shadow, Les is, was just in awe. He, one of his heroes, he does not have many heroes, is Les Diasis, um, the owner, uh, former owner. Well, he's the owner of uh, Benchmade, who just just loved this whole axis lock. And, and McHenry and Williams that designed it just think it's just awesome. So when that came off patent, he knew he wanted to try try that out, so that was his our first reason to try to do the shadow. Needs a little bit more room than the uh, the slimness of the atom and the neutron, so it's a little bit wider. We still wanted to keep a lot of our details. It's still got 20, 20 CV steel. It's got all titanium um, thumb studs, titanium insert. Uh, what else we got here? Titanium cap on the lock bar, titanium deep pocket clip. Oh, uh, what else we got there? And his lock bar, um, it comes apart in two pieces. So when you go to take it apart, which everyone will, it's a lot easier to put it back together. He just oh. showed someone to someone today. It was like, it takes you just a few minutes. There's not many parts to have to worry about because that you could take the, the lock bar apart. When, yeah, when Nick, but... Nixie Bash reviewed that and he said, well, let's, he came up with that. Well, nobody else has had much time to think of something. So, okay, okay. <laughs> I thought it was a pretty cool idea that he came up with that. Oh, I think it's a great idea <laughs> because if, and I'm sure anyone who's ever taken apart a regular axis lock knife yeah. and, and put it back together knows right. it is or, not. Or, or didn't put it back together. We have a couple, <laughs> yeah. we have a couple baggies of uh, axis lock yeah. or other, other companies version because after it came apart, it's 
it's in a baggie now. Yeah, you start questioning, do I, do I really like this knife? I don't <laughs> right, use it that right, much. Maybe right, I could do yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It never got put back together. So so that's where the shadow came from. I don't know if you get a... You get, Let's oh, see. Oh, God, I'm so bad. Bro. Yeah, that's good. If you there hold it right in front. Okay. Oh, yeah. that is beautiful. So, so that's... It's also 3D. Here I go again. Um, go. I'm going back here. Wow, I can't do my horizontal there. Yeah, it's also 3D again. It's kind of hard. People compare prices as always. It's not, it's why is it more than this? Why is it more than that? Um, it's one of these things that you have to get it in, in your hand and the way it's contoured, it just fits right into your hand and it's nice and smooth. It's got some few little cute little features here like the, whoop, I'm gonna go around. To your right, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so bad. And um, it's, mil it's, it's got a milled head on the pivot and since the the uh, G10 is contoured, the head of the pivot is also contoured. Each head is put is milled separately in the, in the mill and CNC machine to have the same contour, so it sits flushed. All those kind of details are things that you know we kind of try to make them a little bit more special. Now, if you just want a knife to cut, that doesn't really matter to you, and you're not going to spend this much money. But if you look at this knife and you just like to look at it and play with it and flip it you, and appreciate all that machining, um, then it's worth it. We just had a lotto for to buy ten of these, and nine hundred people w were willing to have a chance to buy them. So we're not worried about that group of people that thinks, "Oh, well, I could buy a right. X, y or, y, or Z." So we're really happy about the shadow. Two weeks before Blade Show, Les says, "I think I'm going to make a titanium one." Two or three weeks, and and sure enough, he did, and it, it came out beautifully. We actually made ten. It had to pretty much the same program as the G10 one, so it was able to make it, um, and it's just beautiful. How and much more? How much more work and machine time? Here, hold that beautiful thing up. And if you don't mind, uh, pop open the blade. Let's see what the blade looks like too. I, it's a little bit different from your your. No, yeah, the blade's different, but it's exactly the same as. Here I go, Bob. Go this way. Go that way. Oh, look um, at that. Yeah, so it's the same as the as the G10 one. The hardware is the same. Um, so it was able to, once Les made the titanium, he was able to just use the same hardware, the same blade, popped it in, and the knife worked. So that was like, wow. But we're not well, ready. You, you've gone to a clip point, which I, I love, or, or you know, that that sort of, it's a slightly different. Yeah. Uh, let's let's see the lock. Un undo the lock. <laughs> let's see that blade drop. Are there bearings in there? Uh, no. Let's just had a discussion with somebody about, no, he hates bearings. Um. This is about as lock shut. We, we're not into let's see how lock shutty everything is. Our knives are not designed to be, let's see how much you can chop your finger off. This one <laughs> is a little bit more than obviously the other ones, but we just aren't designing things to, to see how much you can cut your finger off. So, but it definitely, it's nice and smooth. See, this goes nice and back. Um, so what we did is we had a lot of for these, um, at the blade show and they were really, they went over very well. So I'm not going to commit yet that we're going to put these in production. I hope so, but we're not going to start lists. We're not going to say, why don't you just make this? How come you did that? Why did you say that? Um, so we're hoping, but we're not making any promises on this. So but, with the new, with the new kind of format, the, um, your style of the access lock, you call it the river lock. Yeah, we call it the river lock. We get a lot of help for names using the you know, Instagram or Facebook, and we end up doing things related to rivers, like we have the river's edge paddle strop, and uh, this has became the river lock. Somebody said river something, and together we two people came up. We came up with the river lock on that one. So, so how much more um, complicated oh, yeah. is the actual production of that with use, you know, doing the river lock, which is different from everything else you do? Did, I wish I had one um, that was taken apart. There's just an awful lot of small parts and very intricate machining inside here. Let me show you this one. I'll probably do it wrong again. Go the other way. Yeah. Come on, Bob, help, help me. You, Give me okay, my left so and right. To your right. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if you, you probably can't really see it. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can some kind of, of see it. Some of the detail on the spine. Uh, so there, there are milled, like very small milled uh, grooves, almost like, uh, it almost looks like uh, like a custom maker would do some knurling on or something. So like yeah. that, some really nice things. Yeah, I I had a chance to pick one of the the I don't know if it Did was the, the same titanium one, but I got a chance to to hold it and flip it and and it it has a great feel in hand. You've got a finger choil on that knife, which is uh, different from you know at least the atom that I have. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's and, a lot more space. And uh, and the blade is broader, and it just has a, a different feel, but, oh, man, just a luxurious feel. And and I know luxury is not what you're aiming for, but uh, when you can when you can well, uh, zero in on your manufacturing I, in such a way that it just feels yeah. luxurious. I, th I think in this case that is kind of what it is because we actually like the feel of the G10. It's a little bit lighter and would tend to use that one more, but this, this is beautiful. It's probably an ounce. I actually have my scale here. Uh, don't go anywhere without a scale, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just about five ounces for the tie and three and a half for the G10 one. Wow. That uh, it's, is not, just... it's still not heavy for you know so much titanium, but compared to the other one, it is. But I hope we get, do get this out, but... I make too many promises and it's too early on. Right. I did that. I did that with the titanium atom and we're into that for about two years now. And finally, I think we're going to be able to bail out about, oh, about a year and a half ago. I threw out to the Facebook group, Hey, who would buy one of these for $375? And everybody said in, and somehow I made that an official list. It was over a year ago. And then, because what happened is let's just, I told you that let's meet a, a prototype for the, for the shadow and right away it worked great. Okay, we can do this. He made 10. Well, he made a couple of the, uh, t the titanium atom and the first couple were great. So of course, oh good, let's go tell everybody and make a list. So that was over a year ago. So he had some problems that he ended up not really being able to solve. So we went back to where we started about two years ago making titanium scales. So now we have, all right, Bob. Ooh, let's okay. see. Can get me in there. All right. What are we, are let's we looking go at? Strawberries? Oh, my okay. God. Okay. I got to practice. I'm so bad. I had it down when I was going the other direction. You have it. You have it. Just, just right no, there. I, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Now, now put your right. the flat of your palm <laughs> behind it so it focuses on the knife. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. There you go. <laughs> so these are titanium scales we're looking at here? Well, these are, ti yeah, titanium scales and mm. titanium clip. Uh, made it a little bit different clip, made it so it's uh, countersunk. Oops, I give up. Um, there'll be pictures of these eventually. And what we're going to do, eventually we want to sell them as scales. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to get through our list of whatever it is, 95 as a whole knife. We want to make sure that it functions well with these because, you know, each material is slightly different. When we first started making titanium handles, it, it wasn't working right. Couldn't get the lock up right. There were just some different issues that Les couldn't work through. He's figured them out. We're 99% sure he has, but we want to get the first 100 as complete knives and then and then more after that. Now, once we feel that they're all out and, and we can start just selling them as scales, and people won't have issues once they get them, won't have lock up issues. Okay. We don't want anything going out that's not safe. So for, right now we're going through the Facebook list. And there is no more. Uh, you cannot be added to the list. You cannot swap for the list. You cannot beg for the list. You can't bribe me for the list. You can't. Not even uh, maple syrup from Canada is, good, is enough. Somebody tried that one the other day. Not not enough. Oh, I was can't. thinking that was a hint. No, nah, no, nah, that's not enough. <laughs> can't do it. Um, so we hopefully will will go more uh, beyond that first hundred, obviously, and so and definitely get out just to doing handles, which we've made tens of thousands of titanium handles. So it's not like we can't do it. it's just a matter of right. how it's going to work for our whole business i would definitely buy those for this and uh so nine days ago uh as we're recording this you did an atom drop it sold out how well that was a secret that was just a wait adam nine days ago oh yeah that one yeah i can't keep track anymore yeah i they mean it's it, sold we, like hotcakes like immediately right yeah they, they sell out fat we get to the point where we don't want it to be like so dramatic that i didn't get it in three minutes you know they, they last yeah. Half an hour or an hour or something like Half that. Half an so people, hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still, it's still, you don't get the, it was in my cart and it got robbed and all of that. It's like, it's out there and we keep making more and more and more. The other day I, I dropped 50, was that uh, yesterday? I dropped 50 without anybody knowing. But once the group knows, the scouts are out. Right. They tell the group, but then they're gone. So, so it, what, what are the batch sizes that you that you create? Oh, these and in? It, it, well, and it, when we put them in release, anywhere from like one seventy five to two fifty ish, that kind of a thing is where we. Probably and then, a good spot. how much? Uh, how much? Uh, give us an idea of what the operation is like, uh, without you know, divulging any secrets. But I mean, how much hand? Obviously, they have to be put together by hand. But how much hand finishing and 
like what what is it like once the component parts of these come out of the their various machines and such but there's not a lot of uh, hand work you, you know you just can't do that much production and have that much finished work but we do have tumbling and diff our different processes for tumbling the blades mm -hmm. and the handles and the liners um the blades get the most effort they have a certain tumbling process before they get the logo then they get the logo and then there's another process to get the burr off the logo um other than that there really isn't a lot of uh of hand work I mean, they have to come off. The, the scales need to come off. They don't. They shouldn't need any other work after that. Sometimes we have to do some more, more work on the micarta. Do some hand work on the micarta or on the edges of the scales. But the idea is that they're manufactured and, and they're ready, ready to go, ready to be put together. Or we wouldn't be afford to be able to make them. Right. Right. Yeah. It's it's just kind of hard to imagine. I mean, because they really. Um, it, the only ones I've experienced are the ones that were at your table, which was, I think, just one, really, uh, that shadow, and then my own. Yeah. Um, but they, they're they so um, kind of perfectly put together. It, it, it kind of made me wonder how, how they actually come together. Um, well, what happens is the ones that don't come together are in that bucket or in that place that nobody sees. Right. So we have a, we know our customers look at things very carefully. So our QC is we look at every, I mean, we look at the same, you know, the light at noon, you know, with your microscope or whatever, we you know, we, we really know what people are going to notice. And so we try to kind of anticipate that and not go, Oh, you can't say, is that good enough in our shop? That cause that you always know what that means when someone says, is that good enough? You know, it means it's not. So it's not. we also have what we call two dots, two and three dots. If there's something wrong, some cosmetic, it's usually going to be with the blade because anything else we could replace. Some kind of cosmetic, we, we take $20 off and we call them two dots. We put two little dots. We have them engraved on the back by where it's uh, the knife, know, right where it says TRA, TRM USA. Okay. Two little dots. And we called them originally good but not good enough. And now they're, they're just the two dots. We got the two dot and the three dot. And the guys on the group, you got any two dots, got some two dots coming. Here's a little secret. I think it's going to happen before this gets aired, but we're going to have 22 dot uh, DLC atoms um, mm -hmm. as knives, complete knives um, on our website. So I think that's going to be, let's see. Yeah. Next week, right before this airs. Uh -huh. So really, I'm the only so, one who's going to know about it. I'm buying uh, them all yeah, and I'm going to flip go. them. <laughs> and, and you're going to, yeah, you're going to flip them away. Okay. That's interesting. Two dot. So yeah. two dot is is some sort of uh, blemish. Uh, yeah. What what is the uh, three dot? Three dot tends to be it looks something in the blade. Again, we don't have very many of them. If the blade has a little bit of a flat spot when it's being bevel ground, which okay. makes it look like it's bent, it really isn't bent, but okay. it makes it look bent. And we sure don't like to make many of those, and we don't tend to have many of those. Uh, originally, we just wanted to sell these at shows. Then, when there's such a long period with no shows, so we trusted that the guys in the group learned when it meant to be two dot, three dot, and we, we trusted that they could get them and understand it, and not say, "Hey, wait a minute, there's a little scratch." Yes, that's why it's a two dot. So we haven't had we haven't had issues um, doing it on that. So we call sometimes we put them up as naked knives without any scales because guys have so many scales without knives. So we put up sometimes naked atoms or naked neutrons. Mm, that's so a great just, idea. So they can just um, take some of their scales that they have. But this time we, with the DLC, it's pretty special. They, no one but you knows that, that we're going to sell them as, as knives. We're going to put nice scales on them and sell it as a knife. Pen out, right yeah. down. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit, tell us about the design process. Um, uh, is it you and less? Is it just less? And, and is it, in the computer world, tell me about how, how these oh, boy. knives are designed. Right. I mean, we've, we definitely have used other designers. Like I said, a couple of those things that we did with uh, Bob Gisola and, um, and RJ Martin. And that's certainly something we could do again in the future. Uh, but right now, Les has been doing it. Um, and it's just, I, I can't even describe what it involves. He de definitely uses Master Cam and hours and hours and hours of, of designing it. And then it gets to a point where something can be. Uh, he wants to see what it looks like. And we, we use our water jet very, very early on and just make a, the knife, just the basic parts of the knife so you can see it and feel it what, it, what it looks like. That's how we start originally. It's very nice having your own water jet right there to go take a file and just cut some out and play around with it. And it's kind of amazing. I keep saying the Facebook group, but we when we did the nerd, we had about five different iterations of that because people would keep saying, oh, what about this? I don't like this. I hate that. 
Um, and we like to make things that we like, but it doesn't matter if other people don't like it. So we do like to listen to what, what our customers uh, like. So it's just, it's a long process and a lot of things end up going nowhere too. Uh, we've got a few of those, quite a few of those. Uh, but right now we're on a good, good thing with this, with taking that shadow and then moving it to the titanium and continuing on with our different scales. So right now we're really focusing on the shadow. At some point we'll do some more uh, similar to using the same river lock with other models, but it, it, it just, it's hard to do too much at once. Um, because right now atoms and neutrons are in, in continuous production. You know, take, it could take 10 weeks from beginning to end. We got, you know, heat treat a couple of weeks. We got uh, double disc and grind a couple of weeks. Um, so it's a long process. So you have to have, right now we have several thousand blades in process doing something somewhere, either being assembled or at logo or at heat treat or being milled. So there's always something going on. So there's constant, there's probably a thousand atoms and a thousand neutrons and 600 shadows and uh, 400. Yeah, there's a few thousands somewhere. So my part of my, most of my job is to coordinate all of that. So there's always something everywhere. There's always something at the end. And there's always something getting ready to get to the end. Because we have people that work there. If you're working assembly, you have to have something to assemble. Right. So everybody's got to have what they need. If, you're, if your job is to bevel blades, you have to have blades that have come back from heat treat so you can bevel something. So everything's so kind of always staggered. There's always something. A, a constant, yeah, it's just a constant cycle, several cycles. Right now there's probably four cycles of neutrons someplace. How do you so find, uh, how do you find the, the difference between the knife part of the company and other, I mean, just in terms of the business? It's, it's completely different in terms of the business part of it. Where with, with manufacturers, when we went, we started with custom knife makers and it's one person at a time, it's, and I gradually jumped to uh, manufacturer. It's like, wow, this is different. You know, you're doing emails and everybody writes big, long paragraphs and it, it's just so formal and wow. But with the, with the big companies, you're doing a big order and you're making stuff and you're shipping it out and then they're going to pay you. And you're only dealing with a handful of people in, you know, in sales or in marketing or, or, you know, just a handful of people at each company. Versus you take your own knives and we're selling almost all of them directly. So one by one, you're dealing with every single customer, every single customer's problem, and you're marketing something. When we were making other customers' knives, it got a little frustrating when our knives were like knife of the year or on Blade, Blade Magazine or something that weren't ours. Um, but it's still different. The whole marketing thing is the key to going from – Somebody else makes it, they pay you, and they get all the praise. They earned it because they did that, the marketing end of it. So now we get to learn how to do that part. And how, how do you so do the marketing? it's completely different. Oh, boy. How are we doing it? We just did it. We just start one by one. Started with that Facebook group has been, been huge. And um, started that a few years ago. But the last two years, it just keeps growing. I just believe in you know, a little at a time, little at a time. We just keep moving. We believe what people – want to hear what they have to say. We make changes. If it makes sense to us, we can do it fairly quickly. We answer every phone call. We don't have a message machine. We answer every email. I answer every private message, every message on Instagram, every comment, uh, everywhere. Wow. Um, but I have good people that give me time to kind of play because people like that. They like to think that, you know, that I'm part of it. Now, obviously, it's not a joke. I am actively a part of every everything there so it's just a matter it's a matter of de developing relationships I mean it's, my teaching background has been tremendously important part which I didn't even realize at all the planning and the interacting with one at a time I was a special ed teacher teaching mostly adolescent boys um, reading writing math and you better know how to fill up some time you better know how to interact you better know who's in a good mood who's in a bad mood who likes uh, hot balls and who likes Titty rolls, you know, just right down to that. And that's just in my nature from biz, from teaching and all the planning and organizing and keeping and, and being able to change as the things change in business constantly in manufacturing. You can have this great plan. I just told you about the blades and they go here and then they go there. Well, in the meantime, that machine's down, that guy's out, you know, yeah. there's, that's reality. And, and teaching, I had to do that. You have to kind of shoot from the hip. You have to change and adapt constantly. Um, I taught, junior high school right there I had it was responsible for a hundred different students with scheduling them and working you know supervising their uh, teachers aides and something happens every day you know there'd be a kid that you was on the attendance and it said he was out 
one of your favorite kids and you get the attendance and he was out and you had him in class at nine o'clock and guess what? He came, he was in on time for your class. So you know, just constantly at little adjustments, that kind of thing, who's in, who's out, who's sick. Um, so those adjustments leading to manufacturing and, and organizing and planning ahead and working with all kinds of people just kind of was a natural uh, progression, especially scheduling, scheduling knives just been, oh, I just realized I am sideways here. Um, <laughs> so I did, I did scheduling as a teacher too for kids. So just a different kind of scheduling knives. Knife yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> knives. knives are so much more fun than kids. Just kidding kids. <laughs> Love you. Do you have any plans? Uh, does TRM have any plans to do a flipper? We've done, and we're not. We've done a few. No, okay. we're not. We is that like a matter? Is that a matter of taste, or yeah, or is it yeah, yeah. We don't like. Them. We've done them. We don't need to do them. We don't like them. <laughs> so, so how do you feel about the front <laughs> flipper then? <laughs> we did a. We did one. We we did that in a Kagaya, which was one of those projects that never got finished. Yeah, we just we just. Uh, don't really like them. We like what we're doing and we let other people flip. We did cool. a beautiful, we did a beautiful flipper for, we were doing a turbocharger, Greg Lightfoot's uh, turbocharger. We did oh, a, yeah. and uh, we made about six prototypes and they were just absolutely gorgeous. It was uh, bearings and a flipper and it just does not fit what we are. So we gave up the project. That was two years ago. So wow, just then that... it's a beautiful, so I think it's our best work ever. So we should, did we show you that at the late show? Uh, I don't think I saw that. Yeah, because we like to show off with that one. It's just gorgeous work. I, I love Greg Lightfoot's designs, so yeah. I, I, I probably so just... his yeah that design just doesn't. We knew Greg for we know Greg for twenty years, so we went back. Hey, Greg, let's do something. So we worked for many months getting it back. It's just perfect uh, replica of his, and um, we brought it to Bleach Show, and people wanted an atom and a neutron, and yeah, that's nice. You have any atoms? So we realized it's just it just wasn't our thing. So yeah. it, was, it was bad, but it was less always. He's got a good attitude about that. Well, I learned a lot while I was doing it. So, yeah, I mean, you really have this core core product that people are just that that real knife aficionados are crazy about. And uh, and like you were saying before, I mean, you were basically indicating that that your marketing happens. Uh, I mean, you do a lot of hard work in in responding to everyone and everything. But a lot of the marketing happens in in your little tight knit Facebook community, for instance, mm -hmm. or, or um, you know, I, I I've never seen you don't ever uh, sell these at distributors or 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 online purveyors, do you? And and I don't we, remember ever we, seeing an we, ad or anything we, like that. We we did start two years ago at Blade HQ, and it still mm. says coming soon for like a uh. year and a half now. They never take it off. We just couldn't supply them. We just could not any, come anywhere near supplying them. One time we sent them 50, and the way they did things is they would say, they would show people what's new that day, but when they sent out their uh, emails, it was in the evening. So people that just watched what's new bought them all before the evening, and then they never sent out the email. So they, they had quite a nightmare to try to try to figure out how to answer that one. So, I mean, they, they couldn't believe it was like a minute. They, they were like gone and they never even hit the email notification people. So I kept saying, you know, as soon as we can get, you know, a hundred of each knife a month, we'll be and it. Just we can keep selling them ourselves directly. We can sell a lot directly. Um, we do have two brick and mortar stores. This is an experiment I came up with about a year ago that we that you can only sell. You have to be in the store and we give people a chance to come to a store, feel it, maybe never heard of it before. And we, and they just get 10 atoms at a time. And that's, uh, huh. yeah, just to try something new. So are these and, local knife stores uh, local no, to they, you? They're on, they're on our website, River's oh, Edge okay. oh, and, River's and, and Way of Knife. And they do some awesome mods, which is, again, I think separates us, us from other companies is that we encourage people to make modifications on our knives. Um, to me, it's sort of a compliment that we like it so much that we want to spend more money and we send it to other people. We've got Match Anderson that's made, oh, he makes just beautiful scales for the Neutron and the Atom. And I uh, actually started him, encouraged him way back, helped work with him, gave him a few things that he needed to work about, think about when he was milling things. And he's just, he's a member of our group and his little hobby side, side thing is helping him pay his tuition for school. So um, we encourage it. It's great. 
we even have a section on our website that says customer mods. We have all kinds of pictures of people that think, do things to fix our knife. It just, to me, it means that you really like it. Someone liked it enough. He made leather scales for his neutron. Mm, mm, mm. Ne like, ne never again, he said. So there's one set, one set of those. Uh, have you heard of uh, GL Hansen and Sons Calcarta yet? I don't it, think. It, yes, I have. It's, there's certain, certain um, G Cartas that aren't good for us for machining. Some of them with too many little colors, it can kind of appeals out or it chips or it's just not strong enough. Mm. So certain ones that we, we cannot do not without losing too much. It's expensive. So right. we can't, you know, you can't have a fallout of 30% of your material after you've already milled them, find out it cracks or something. So right. yeah, there you go. There's the leather ones. Here Beautiful you know. mods, man. Oh, and, and there's, there's a Thunderbird. That's the Thunderbird. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah, is, and that's, that is beautiful. My, I think that's my person who uh, anodized that or had it anodized. These guys send presents. That's why I know all these names. They send gifts. We like gifts. And that, uh, <laughs> we like gifts. I like, like the one that looks like a rainbow trout there. Yeah, that's from Amplify.com. That's their uh, Instagram. Wow. And we sell we sell them actual G10 handles, so they obviously fit perfectly, and then they do what magic what they do. It's really nice things. They have other, nice, other companies too, but uh, they do some nice stuff. So uh, what is what is everyone looking? For, what can we look forward to from you guys? Uh, we got the shadow. I mean, so you're you basically told me you're you're you want to bring the shadow wide. You just don't know how wide or, or yep. when. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to keep going with that one. Uh, we have experimented with doing a button lock. A lot of people like them. Alas doesn't like them. But, you know, someday if we have time, we ha I even had it named. It was named uh, Ember. I saw that name in a restaurant in New York. I said, oh, I like that. And then someone else said they had it ember, so I changed it to blaze. So we have a name, but we don't have a knife yet. So it's, got it all it's all designed, so it may happen. But now that the shadow has been become a shadow with uh, titanium, it will. we'll probably make a carbon fiber shadow. Um, who knows what we'll do with neutrons and never can tell. So, but, so we do other things down the road, but right now there's so many different things and developing the river lock, do, doing other knives with that, and, and trying to get what we are doing steady, and we can get a certain. Like right now, we're getting a lot of atoms out, a lot of neutrons, so we're getting fewer people yelling at us how they can't get one. There's still shadows are still like, still yelling, but um, so we want to get to the point where that's not quite so crazy. Um, so there's it, a lot to balance, obviously. And you mentioned uh, um, fat carbon, maybe in the offing yeah. that would be. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the few carbon fibers that really, really uh, gets me going. I really like the way yeah. that stuff looks. Um, well, so if people want to keep up with you, the probably the best way is the Facebook group and Instagram. Yes. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and that Facebook group seems to be a pretty welcoming place, but yes. also a place where a lot of wheeling and dealing happens. Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of trades, but but it's not like flipping things for like. If somebody sees something that's a higher price, they'll bring it to the group. And we don't, not too often is it someone in the group that's flipping it for three times as much. But um, they're, they're kind of an amazing group that actually give things away and, and sell knives for no money, no gain. They're, not, they're just because, hey, I want someone else. I didn't buy an atom because I want someone else to get it. Or I bought an atom and he's going to sell it to this other guy that didn't have one. They're just kind of a remarkable group of people from around the world. It's just, it's really fun. For the love of the TRM knives. Well, Marianne, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It was thank great as always to catch up with you. And, um, you know, uh, not that my uh, enthusiasm needs to be reinvigorated, <laughs> but this whole this whole blemish thing, this whole two dot thing. Has, has <laughs> Got my the ears tree, dot, right? Yeah, I'll see if I can, <laughs> see if I can see one for you, Bob. Oh, geez. All right. <laughs> Thanks. All right. All right, Marianne, it's been yeah. a pleasure. All right, you too. Good night. All right, good night. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. There she goes, Marianne Halpern of TRM Three Rivers Manufacturing. I love their knives. I love catching up with her. Uh, it's, it's always fun. And uh, and the power of yes, I love that. You know, can you do titanium? Yes. And then you figure out how. Always say yes, and it will take you places. Uh, just look at TRM. That's how they got where they are. 
Uh, check out the other great podcasts with other uh, with other interesting people uh, right here on Sundays. You can either watch on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, etc., or you can just listen. If you're mowing the lawn or doing the dishes and you can't be watching, uh, listen to a podcast. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google, iHeartRadio, or iHeart, I should say, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and, uh, well, a lot more. Uh, so check us out there. Of course, there's the Wednesday Midweek Supplemental. We've been having some, uh, some guests on that as well. And, of course, Thursday Night Knives, the warmest night of the week. Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.